Hey, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, you'll learn all about working with unique values in Pandas, including how to identify unique values, count them, as well as how to work with unique values across different columns. Let's get started. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing and be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. If you haven't seen the rest of this series, check out the link above to learn more about Pandas and how to use it for data analysis in Python. All right, let's write some code. I've already uh, written down some code here which imports pandas and assigns it to the alias pd. Here we're creating a data frame using a dictionary where we'll have three different columns called a, b, and c, which each contain different values. Let's run this code and then print the data frame to see what it looks like. So like I mentioned before, we do have three columns, a, b, and c, each containing different values ranging from one through five. Now, finding unique values in pandas is extremely easy as there's a dot unique method built directly into it. The unique method is applied directly to a particular column, meaning that we can access unique values within a pandas column by accessing the column directly and then applying the unique method to it. So for example, if we run this, we can see that it returns an array object with the numbers one and two in it because only the values one and two are unique in the column A. Now you could also write this not using the dictionary but using the dot notation by writing df.a.unique and you would return the exact same thing. Now in itself, having this array returned isn't necessarily the most useful way to conduct your analysis further. Say you wanted to be able to draw on that, say as a list, you'd be able to turn this array directly into a list by using the toList method. So again, we've written here df and accessed the a column. We've then created the array using the unique method. Then we apply another method to the array directly, which is the toList method. When we return this, we can see that we've now generated a list that contains the same values as the array, but in list format. You can accomplish the exact same thing as we did using the toList method by using the list function. So instead of chaining the toList method to the unique method, we're wrapping the entire thing in a list function. So we've written list and then passing in the unique array generated by passing the unique method into the A column of data frame df. And you can see here that we've returned the exact same list as before. Now say you wanted to know how many unique values are in each column. You could do this by passing the length function directly to the unique array. So for example, when we run this, we can see that the column A has two unique values as we know from here. Now we can change df A to df B, for example, if we wanted to know how many unique values there are in column B. If we do this, we can see that there's three unique values. Let's quickly scroll up to make sure that this is accurate. So we have the value three and three, four and five. So there's three unique values in this column. Now, there may be times when you wanna see unique combinations of values across multiple columns. In order to do this, we can run the drop duplicates function apply to two specific columns. You'll note here that we've actually wrapped this in double brackets to only select columns A and B. When we run this, what's happened is it's returned a data frame with unique values stretched across the two columns. We can see here that record two has been dropped. Let's take a look at what record two looked like previously. Record two here contains the same values as index number zero in columns A and B. Because of this, it's been dropped. So what this data frame here is telling us is that the unique combinations across columns A and B are the subset that are found here. Another thing you may be curious about is how often each unique value actually occurs within a unique column. For this, we can use the value counts method, which we've covered off in a different tutorial, which you can find right up here. So let's run this. We've applied the value counts method directly to column A of data frame df. 
We can see here that the value 1 occurs two times and the value 1 occurs twice as well. Now let's take a look at the unique values and their counts of column B. We can see that the value 3 occurs two times while the values 5 and 1 occur once. This is really handy to get a better sense of how often different values occur within a data frame. The last method we'll take a look at is the nUnique method. This one's a bit unique in that it returns the count of unique values across an entire data frame. So when we run df.nUnique, what this will return is per column how many unique values exist in each column. So we can see here that column A contains two unique values, column B contains three, while column C contains four. Let's scroll back up to make sure that this is accurate. We've already explored that column A only contains two unique values. Column B contains three, while column C contains four. Okay, so you've learned quite a bit in this video. You've learned how to work with unique values in pandas using the unique method, as well as the nUnique method. You've learned how to count unique values within a data frame, as well as how to identify unique values across multiple columns. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and consider subscribing to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.